Welcome to the Lutheran Church of Honolulu for this 13th Sunday after Pentecost. Pentecost is uh, the season of the church year where we recognize the presence of the Spirit and the uh, sacredness of each mundane and extraordinary um, in the ordinary moment. So this is the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. I'm Vicar Bree. I'm Pastor Jeff. Uh, let us join together in worship as we listen to the prelude. Thank you to our accompanist, Reed Ishikawa, for that beautiful prelude um, titled, We're Marching to Zion. Uh, it's by Robert Lowry, arranged by Mark Hayes. You're welcome to join me now as we recognize those ways that we have hurt ourselves and each other this week and to turn our hearts towards forgiveness and reconciliation. Blessed be the creator who makes us whole, the redeemer who mends our hurts, and the Holy Spirit who abides with us in times of trouble and sorrow. Amen. Amen. God of all hope, come to the help of your people, calling us from our selfishness to live for you and our neighbor. Send your Holy Spirit that we might see with new eyes and turn again to you. Open our hearts that we might love fully as you have taught us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us make our confession in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have, have mercy on us. We, we confess, confess that we often turn away from you and give ourselves to powers which do not bring life. We have not cared for creation as we ought and have taken more than we have given. We have not shared your love with our neighbors and made enemies with strangers. We turn to you with humble hearts 
In your, in your compassion, compassion, heal our brokenness. Forgive, forgive our injustices, things, things we have done and things, things we have failed, failed to do. Gather, gather us into your mercy and lift us up in your spirit so that we may live and serve you with new and abundant life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, receive God's free and abundant life. God abides with us and shares the joy of the resurrection to, to new life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, who is one God, Mother of us all. Amen. Amen. You're welcome to join us now for our gathering hymn. <laughs> Sisters, brothers, siblings in Christ, beloved children of God, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth. 
that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You're welcome to be seated as we listen to the readings. A reading from 1 Kings. Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the ancestral houses of the Israelites before King Solomon in Jerusalem to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. Then the priests brought the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to its place in the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most holy place, underneath the wings of the cherubim. And when the priests came out of the holy place, a cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands to heaven. He said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping the covenant and steadfast love of your servants who walk before you with all their heart, the covenant that you kept for your servant, my father David, as you declared to him, you promised with your mouth and have this day fulfilled with your hand. Therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, keep for your servant, my father David, that which you promised him, saying, there shall never fail you, you, there shall never fail you a successor before me to sit on the throne of Israel, if only your children look to their way to walk before me as you have walked before me. Therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be confirmed, which you promised to your servant, my father David. But will God indeed dwell on this earth? Even, even heaven and the highest, highest heaven cannot contain you, much less this house that I have built. Regard your servant's prayer and his plea, O Lord my God, heeding the cry, cry and the prayer that your servant prays to you today, that your eyes may be open day, night and day toward this house, the place of which you said, my name shall be there, that you may heed the prayer that your servant pray, prays toward this place. Hear the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. Oh, here in heaven, your dwelling place, heed and forgive. Likewise, when a foreigner who is not of your people Israel comes from a distant land because of your name, for they shall hear of your great name, your mighty hand and your outstretched arm. When a foreigner comes and prays toward this house, then hear in heaven your dwelling place and do according to all that the foreigner calls you to you so that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you as do your people Israel. And so that they may know that your name has been invoked on this house that I have built. Word of God, word of life.
A reading from Ephesians. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes up for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench the flaming arrows, arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times and in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. The word of God, word of life. Please rise in body or spirit for the gospel acclamation and the reading of the gospel. to 69 the holy gospel according to john jesus said those who eat of my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and i in them just as the living father sent me and i live because of the father so whoever eats me will live because of me this is the bread that came down from heaven not like that which your ancestors ate and they died but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching at the synagogue in Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult, who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the son of man ascending to where he was before? It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one who would betray him. And he said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God who creates and redeems and sustains all things. Amen. This morning we hear one of the hard sayings of Jesus. He says to those who are gathered around him, to his disciples, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. It's a hard saying, and it certainly was one that was difficult for his disciples. 
Vicar Bree last week in her sermon mentioned throughout this whole bread cycle that we go through in John. The concerns, understandable concerns, that the imagery is just disgusting. It's cannibalism. And so the disciples, I think, like many others, get stuck on that idea. That's the image that's in their head. For me, I hearken back to the story of Jacob and putting his son on the altar of the child sacrifice that we know that was part of early worship. Of the times over and over again where blood is spilled. And it's almost in that moment that Jesus is returning back to something we just can't accept. It's hard. It's hard. But I'm not sure it's the hardest word of Jesus. There are many more that I think Christians and the world hear from Jesus that I think are even more difficult. At least with this saying, we can sort of dismiss it as a sort of opaque reference to the Eucharist to the bread and the wine that we eat each week. But some are more difficult and less palatable, really. For me, the harder sayings of Jesus are things like, if you want to follow me, then sell all that you have and give it to the poor. There's no lack, there's no lack of definition there. There's no ambiguity. Or even when Jesus says to the disciples, follow me. Leave everything. There are plenty of hard sayings that Jesus calls us to which are not comforting or easy or easy to understand. The disciples on this day find themselves teetering on indecision. As they hear Jesus say these words, you can imagine them thinking to themselves, has he lost his mind? Is this the Jesus that we said we would follow? They are standing on the knife edge of indecision. What will people think? That's my Lutheran question. I think if the disciples had been Lutheran, the first thing they would have asked was, well, what will people think if we follow this man who just said these things? Am I crazy for following him? They're at a tipping point. Should we follow or should we not? He has said something that is so hard. And unlike us, they have to make their decision without the benefit of knowing about the cross and his death and his resurrection and the outpouring of the Spirit that will follow. For them, that tipping point is not just theological or a matter of loyalty. For them, it is a tipping point of their lives. Do they follow Jesus? Beloved teacher, healer, will they hang in the balance with him as he says these hard things? Or will they simply walk away? The question that hangs in the balance is one that was set up by John in the first chapter. As Jesus was there with the disciples and they walked behind him, he turned to them and said, What are you looking for? What are you looking for? Are you looking for a companion, a teacher, a rabbi, a leader, a savior, 
a miracle worker, a nice place to hang out, a change of pace, a club, comfort, joy, challenge. What are you looking for? Transformation? Hope? And now all these chapters later, Jesus says something to them that makes them wonder, what were we looking for after all? And I think it's the same question we ask ourselves at our tipping points. I think the question of Jesus hangs in the balance with both the disciples at this point in their history and with us at this point in our history. I imagine a long silence after Jesus said those words. Which road will we take, they wonder. It seems to me that we find ourselves also at so many tipping points that it's almost impossible to walk that Occam's razor edge all the time. Here we are in the middle of tragedy after tragedy unfolding around us in our community and also in the world. The images of men and women and children clinging to the undercarriage of U.S. military transports in Kabul should never leave us. They should never be easily dismissed or forgotten. People so desperate to get away that they would risk their very lives. We should never forget the women who are literally fearing for their lives because they spoke up or got an education or got a job. These are not theoretical, theological issues that we can argue around cups of coffee and wine late at night. We cannot dismiss them as mere Eucharistic theory. This is flesh and blood and life. We find ourselves debating both sides of the question. We cannot surely spend another 40 years in a war far, far away. Nor can we abandon our principles that undergird our very existence that human dignity and life are more important than politics. As we are here this morning, Haiti continues to find itself crushed under the weight of natural disasters and political unrest. And again, people are dying hopeless and in need. We can go on and on and on about all of the things that are happening in the world. COVID-19 once again finding its way, uh, uprising so unexpectedly. And again, we find ourselves walking a line between, well, should we force people to get vaccinated or not? A doctor in desperation wrote, last week that he has simply decided that he can no longer treat unvaccinated COVID patients. It's just too hard. 
And whether we agree with his sentiment or not, we do understand that his soul is being torn apart by what he believes versus what he can bear. We stand again and again, teetering on the brink of trying to decide what to do. There are hard sayings and hard situations all around us wherever we look and we are exhausted and we are tired and we just we just want to stop sometimes i think we want like some of the disciples did to simply walk away to something that is less difficult to hide ourselves in the comfort of oblivion. We teeter not on the question of some kind of Eucharistic theory. I think what we teeter on and what the disciples teetered on that day is the question of whether or not we will choose life. Not just for ourselves, but for others. Or will we choose to fade into the background, irrelevant, but safe? Peter is often cast in this text as the hero. And I'm not so sure that's the right way to go. But Peter, when Jesus looks at the twelve and says to them, Do you also wish to go away? Again, I imagine in my mind a long silence as they thought about it. And Peter answers, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And those words, as hard as they are to hear, really are an qu- answer to the question, are we willing to accept what Jesus has to offer, even if it is his own flesh and blood? Are we willing to accept what Christ is giving us, which is the ability and the hope and the energy to love in a way that seems way beyond anything we could imagine. Because you see, I think that the flesh and blood that Jesus speaks of is all wound up in what it means to be caught up in the Spirit of God, living and working and abiding in a world that is broken and full of hardship and hard sayings. And what Jesus offers us in bread, in wine, in body, in blood, in community, in spirit, and his transformation is true life. Bound up in his word and his word of hope. And that true life comes not from the love that we receive from God. Certainly that is part of it. But the true love, the true life that we are given is the love that we will give away. To stand in solidarity with those who are suffering. To not look away from children clinging to the undercarriage of a C-47 and not forgetting that in Haiti the world is exploding and that for all the suffering and the hardness that is around us Christ still remains 
and calls us to the hardest saying I think Jesus ever said. Love each other. Amen. Our worship continues with our hymn of the day. It's in the ELW. And it is Blessed Assurance, which we certainly need in these days, is some Blessed Assurance, number 638 in the ELW. Let's sing. children and heirs of God's promise, we pray now for the church, the world, and all in need. God of courage, bless all leaders of your church. Make them ready to proclaim the gospel of peace and love and strengthen them to preach your loving word. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of creation, bless fields and orchards. Protect the land from drought and bring life-giving rain to support growth. Instruct your people in wise treatment of the world you have provided for all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of community, bless all who seek justice between nations and peoples. Give guidance to bridge builders, heal divisions, and inspire cooperation in times of crisis, disaster, and war. We lift up particularly now the women, children, and all people of Afghanistan, whose future and safety are uncertain. We lift up the women and children of the Tigray region in Ethiopia, who are continuing to be violently harmed by the region's warring groups. And we lift up the people of Haiti, who are struggling with loss, devastation, and rescue 
after the recent earthquake. Be with them all and help us to be your hands and your help. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of compassion, bless all who are in any need. Accompany all who are lonely and feeling abandoned and remind them of your abiding presence. Accompany all who are persecuted and exploited and open us to their cries. We pray for Alyssa, the family of Anita and Melissa, Arnold, friends and family of Billy, Bruce, Colleen, Elwyn, Greg, Ilsa, Judy, Kai and his family, Karen and Richard, Kathy, Kavai, Kahi, Kendra, Lori, Michael, Patricia, Pomai, Resi, Robin, Sydney, Tom, William, and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear the prayer. God of change, bless our transitions. Guide all who are embarking on new stages in life, such as a new job, new school, or new community. Sustain enduring friendships and kindle new relationships and interests. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of comfort, bless all who mourn the deaths of their beloved ones. We give you thanks for the saints who have gone before us. Renew your confidence in your promise of resurrection and life in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you all. And also, and also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with one another. And now, as we have been given in time, talent, and treasure, we offer our gifts.
Let us pray. Jesus, joy of the world, you gift us with your presence and call us to share our gifts with the world. We give you thanks for all we have and share your gifts with generous hearts for the sake of the world. In the name of the triune God, amen. Let us pray. Holy God, our maker, our healer, our teacher, your magnificent creation springs forth from your word. All that has life and breath praises your name. For your word that sustains the earth, we thank, thank you, you, O God. God. We thank you, O God. God. You sent us Jesus, your word to renew the world. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, preached your mercy and called us to faith. For your, word in our, for your word in our Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you, O God. We, we praise, praise you, O God. God. Nourish us with the spirit of your word that we may grow in grace, bearing the fruits of redemption and sharing your strength and beauty with all the world. For your word in our lives, we entreat you, O God. We entreat, entreat you, o God. o God. Accept our thanksgiving and receive our prayer for the sake of your living word, Jesus, our Savior. Amen. 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 You're welcome now to join us in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Oops. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the God of love grant you to live in harmony with one another and the world, that peace, justice, and hope might prevail in the world. Amen. Amen. May you be blessed upon your way to be a blessing for others. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier. Amen. You're welcome to join us now for the sending hymn, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. I am weak. 
Go in peace and share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Join us as we listen to the postlude.